No matter how styles change, one thing it seems is always in. Thin, even outrageously thin. I can give you what you want. The internet was abuzz last month over these digitally slenderized ads showing impossibly thin Ralph Lauren models. The company says the release was a mistake, but it struck a nerve. And on this topic, says Washington Post fashion editor Robin Givon, that's not unusual. We react really strongly to the fact that they have this sort of idealized body type that is virtually impossible for anyone else to attain. Fashion is constantly saying, come on, you know you want to be this, you know you want to wear this. But the divide has never been bigger between the clothes these models wear and the ever larger customers who buy them. In 1960, the average American woman was five foot three and weighed 140 pounds. Roughly 40 years later, she'd grown an inch, but now weighed 164 pounds. The average dress size in America today, 14. I think we're getting more real all over the place. The figures speak for themselves. And increasingly, designers like Betsy Johnson are taking notice. Let's dress more women, because if it's left up to just dressing our skinny minis, we'll be out of business. There ain't enough of them. She's launched a plus-size lingerie line. And designers like Michael Kors and Calvin Klein have plus-size clothing lines. The plus-size market is a growing market. Industry analyst Dana Telsey. I think we're seeing more companies dip their toe in the water in order to gain customers in that size range. Sales are up, and so is visibility. J.C. Penney has begun to use larger mannequins. Well, this is going to give you a realistic viewpoint. Joey Johnston manages a Penney's in New York City. Well, what that does for the customers, when you look at it, it says, oh, that's what it's going to look like on me. Glamour magazine has decided to put more real-sized women in its pages and commissioned this photo of seven plus-sized models. They're not actually plus-size humans. Most of them are somewhere between an 8 and a 12, which is smaller than the average American woman. Cindy Levy is Glamour's editor-in-chief. And we're celebrating their curves. We're celebrating the fact that, you know, listen, there are a million different ways to look beautiful. No one's happier to be in the picture than Crystal Wren. At age 14, a scout told her she could be a top model. One catch. He said, yes, but you just have to lose nine inches off of your hips. And I thought, nine inches? Oh, nine. And what size were you when he told you this? A size 14. Crystal dieted and exercised obsessively until she weighed 98 pounds. At my smallest, I was a size double zero. Yes. Meaning, basically, that the zeros in the, the clothing store would fall off of me. She moved to New York and became a model. Being thin worked for you for a while. Being thin never worked for me. I was very, very, very sick, and I felt it every day. But it wasn't enough for her modeling agency. They pointed at my thighs and said, you need to bring these down. And I just snapped, and I told them, you have no idea what I'm doing, a diet. I, I could die. This is the plus size board. This is the division that I work with. She and began eating again, sensibly. It starts at a size eight and goes all the way up to a 20. Today at 5'9 and 165 pounds, Crystal works as a plus sized model. My success is much greater than when I was starving myself. And I have to say it's really because I have found who I am supposed to be. I am confident. But will the fashion world make room for more Crystal Wrens? When the German women's magazine Brigitte announced that it will show only real women in its pages, Chanel designer Karl Lagerfeld commented, no one wants to see round women. And for all her love of curves, designer Betsy Johnson says sometimes only a skinny model will do. Why do fashion designers believe that clothes look better on a size zero or a size two. I hate to say it, but they do. They look better on the models. I can give you what you want. Still, Crystal Wren remains hopeful. All women in this country are different, and they're all different sizes, and they want to be represented. For women of all sizes, 
the runway remains the last frontier.